Uh, before I came up, Jeffrey Altshul handed me a note. Jeffrey still here? Uh, he wanted me to announce that the merger will be will be completed this Friday. <laughs> Thank you, Jeff. Everybody's wondering about that. But it's an actual note. Uh, wow, what a distinguished crowd. Look at all these people that came from out of town to see Saul. It's unbelievable. All these, all these big shots from all the uh, suppliers. Joel LaHane is here. Mike Peterson. Sasha, famous, most famous retailer in the state. So, the second most famous retailer in the state. Uh, and look who's back. Howard Jacobs. The icon. Where's Howard? Don't tell me he left. Howard's still here. You know, I, I'm actually I'm very surprised, Howard. Because ever since I went into the wholesale business in 1978, ever since then, until the day you retired, you told me how much you hated Saul. <laughs> and so did everybody else in the room. Right <laughs> so, uh, Saul so asked me a few weeks ago to speak at his 80th birthday party. He was very specific. He said he wanted to be roasted and nothing was out of bounds. But how could I roast Saul without the fear that I was going to lose business? <laughs> and then I remember, he doesn't give me any more. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I said, Saul, I think you should get someone else. Maybe somebody from Ally. <laughs> so I quickly replied, no one from Allied would commit to stay to dinner. <laughs> <laughs> now, Saul and I go back over 40 years. Since the mid-70s, before most of the suppliers in this room were doing business with him or knew anything about him, or were even born for that matter. Believe it or not, Saul used to be hard to deal with. <laughs> He's a pussycat now. You could hit the supplier world now. You don't know what he was like. He got mad at everything. God forbid you didn't know your prices. You were toast. He knew his prices, and you better you better have known your prices. I would have liked to have been a fly on the wall when the old shoppers world of liquors got together to discuss ads and prices. Saul, Sasha, Howard Nadell, Gary Fish. Richie McAdams, legends of the industry. They always had to book two rooms for their meetings. One for Saul Zingo and one for everybody else. <laughs> Saul wasn't always a wine and liquor retailer. Believe it or not, and I still don't believe it to this day. Where's Saul? That Saul graduated from Wharton. Is that true, Saul? Graduated, actually graduated? <laughs> With a degree in accounting, nevertheless. Worked as an accountant, a builder, and a stockbroker before becoming the king of the New Jersey retail liquor, liquor world. Prior to buying Bayway, he was a stockbroker for a firm in Newark selling penny stocks and scams to unsuspecting customers. <laughs> Perfect training for his move to retail. <laughs> and scamming unsuspecting suppliers. <laughs> Saul is the master negotiator. As a matter of fact, I was just handed a list before coming up from a few different suppliers. Saul, tickets for the Billy Joel concert have arrived, courtesy of Owen Hennessy. <laughs> Eight tickets in Billy's skybox. <laughs> Couldn't arrange a helicopter, but did arrange car service. Stretch limo, of course. Rich Martel said he just started. Next year, things will be different. <laughs> Rich, they know you. <laughs> and Ben said the 24 tickets for the Cowboys are a done deal. 
Could he please get three cases of Avion? Please. <laughs> David Lippi. Is David here? Barry Jacobs is here. Is David here? I guess not so. But he does confirm that the Seagate Hotel is booked for your January vacation next year. <laughs> Will the penthouse suite for a month be okay? <laughs> Still checking on Rob Sands' plane. <laughs> Most of the industry people in this room have gone to lunch with Saul. It's kind of an industry ritual. He invites you to lunch, usually at Deli King and Linden, or Anthony's Coal Fire Pizza. He has to eat at those places because he's always watching himself. He's not watching what he eats, he's just watching himself. <laughs> so he invites you to lunch, or actually Mark Lisa invites you to lunch. Mark keeps his lunch calendar. <laughs> you pay, you pay for lunch, and then Saul orders a little something to go for Freddy and 200 other people. <laughs> So two corned beef sandwiches for some unsuspecting supplier, $1,500. <laughs> now, some people thought Fedway was upset when Shelly, who, by the way, is the best thing that ever happened to Saul, when Shelly went to work for Ally, nothing could be farther from the truth. We saved tens of thousands of dollars in tickets, dinners, dinners shows, etc., and gave up all the headaches. Only the other distributors in this room can understand how good it felt to say, Saul, if my truck waits all day at your dock one more time, you're going on non-delivery. I'm the only guy who can say that. That was one of the best moments of my life, Saul. <laughs> By the way, it was the one of these lunches uh, that a car drove through Saul's building, crashed through the building right where Saul's desk was. He would have been killed if he weren't at lunch. <laughs> the police dropped the investigation when they saw the list of suspects from the industry. <laughs> it would have taken years to interview everyone who wanted to take that. <laughs> So Saul is the only guy who can, be, who can invite a few hundred of his friends to an 80th birthday party and get JNF to pay for it. <laughs> Didn't cost him a dime. The very famous line, for those of you who remember, uttered by John Pepe when Saul was honored by the American Cancer Society some years ago, Pepe said, if the Gothel's Bridge closed, he could hold this banquet in a phone booth. <laughs> it got a lot of laughs, but the truth is, it's not true. Saul is rough and tough. He yells, he screams, he threatens. But deep down, maybe deep, deep down, <laughs> he's a pussycat with a heart of gold. I've seen that side of him over and over again. When the late Bruce Lipnicki or Tommy Bruno were sick, Saul was the first one, or many others. Kevin Scrapel, kid, was in the... Uh, in Walter Reed Hospital for over a year. Saul was the first one to step up and say, what can we do? And usually without anybody knowing about it. He works tirelessly for charities and political causes he believes in. He is a true champion of those who need support from a society who can lend that support. I have had many fights with Saul over the years, but I don't remember any of them. What I will remember are the qualities that have earned him the respect and admiration of so many people over so many years. So thanks all for making me speak tonight. You were right as usual. Happy birthday.